Here's what you need to know about Audible in 2025. Audible was founded almost 30 years ago, okay? And the biggest milestone in its career was being purchased by the monolithic tech company Amazon. Since then, it is still not totally self-explanatory to everybody. And even though audiobooks have become very popular, they still haven't been accessible for that long. So when you try something new and you get this Audible app, it may be a bit overwhelming if you don't know the ins and outs of it. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the basics of Audible and how it works. I'm gonna do a walkthrough of the app, and I'm also gonna answer some frequently asked questions that people have been having about it. What is Audible? What is a credit? What else is included in your membership? Can you purchase more credits if you run out? In my walkthrough of the app, I'm gonna go over some controls for when you're listening to a book, and are there any drawbacks to Audible? If there are any questions about Audible that I did not answer in this video, please let me know in the comments and I will try to address it, but chances are, and this is really big, if it's really specific, your best bet might be contacting the Audible helpline at 1-888-283-5051 because I don't work for them and there are certain things only they can assist you with. That being said, before we get started, this does not apply to most of you, but please do not ask me about file conversions, making money, or publishing on Audible. I only talk about using Audible here. I don't talk about monetizing it or exploiting its features using third-party software. That's not my thing. If you're looking for more info on that, this is the wrong channel. And if you have a problem with this, this is a picture of my three-legged cat. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam, and I want to make self-growth normal, because people shouldn't have to look this information up. It should just be mainstream knowledge. If you agree, then please make sure to smash that like button. What is Audible? Audible is America's largest audiobook producer and retailer. It is compatible with iOS, Android, Mac OS, Windows, Kindle, and like a bajillion other operating systems. To use it on a smartphone or tablet, you just need to download the app, and on a computer, you just go to their site. Now, Audible is known mainly for its unmatched collection of audiobooks, podcasts, and much more. The most central part to Audible is called a membership, and this is just like any other membership where you pay monthly or yearly for certain benefits. Now, there are different options, and I'll drop some links below below to videos I've done in the past about those. But the most popular gives you one credit per month and the cost may depend on your country, but in the US this is currently about $15 a month. Now, what is a credit? If you have a credit, you can use that credit to buy any audiobook on the platform, no matter the price. And the best part is you get to keep that book forever, even if you cancel your membership. And unlike that stupid X, they will always be there for you. Yes, they will. It's true. But back to credits, take a look at some of these book prices. What is this? Is this what people pay for books, really? Well, you will never, ever have to pay this much for an Audible credit. It is worth noting that some books cost less than credits for whatever reason, so I recommend buying those books with a card instead of credits to save yourself some money. Other than that, I will never stop saying that you can use a credit to buy a $20 book and you can use a credit to buy a $100 book because a credit is a credit is a credit is a credit. There are different ways to get more credits, but I made a whole video about how credits work and I will link that in the description too, I promise. It is not that complicated. A lot of this isn't. What matters is that a credit can buy you a book, and buying books with credits can often be much less expensive than buying with money, but that just makes you wonder. What else is included in your membership? Is it just credits? No. no. Originals. This is essentially Audible exclusive content. It consists of all sorts of stuff from memoirs to comedy specials to plays, and these could be by musicians or actors. Not all of these are included in your membership, but most will be, and you'll know it's an Audible original when it says only from Audible in a little yellow ribbon in the corner. Something else is audiobooks. If you're an Audible member, there is actually a selection of audiobooks on the site that are already included in your membership. It is worth noting that you have access to these as long as you're a paying member, but for permanent access to the book, you do have the option to buy it. This very modest selection is called the Audible Plus catalog. They got bio and memoir, business, finance, fantasy, fiction, literature, health, wellness, uh, history, politics, and way more. To get to this on your phone, you just go to discover at the bottom of the screen and scroll down to Audible Plus where it says more from your membership. To get this on your computer, you just go to plus catalog at the top of the screen. Next is sleep tracks and meditation programs. This is an interesting one right now the actual section was available on the app and the site, and as of late 2024, I can't seem to find it on the app or on the site's navigation menu, but as a member, you can access it on the site at audible.com sleep and any of its contents on the app or site by search. Despite its sudden change in ease of accessibility, however, it is still available to members. This includes bedtime stories, the most recent additions by the legendary John Stamos, the iconic Sterling K. Brown, and 
graceful Eva Longoria. Last year, oh my gosh, I name dropped one by Diddy, whose work is thankfully no longer even on the platform. <laughs> Meditations, sound baths, which is like resonant instrument tracks. If you click on any of these, it'll tell you what it is, by the way. ASMR and more, but this can all be really helpful for people who don't easily fall asleep without background noise or some guidance toward a more tranquil state. If you're interested in anything digital sleep tracks, I would definitely recommend just exploring this in my opinion, literally slept on addition to Audible. And lastly, podcasts. Audible has a ton of options for podcasts in every genre, from business to comedy to government to sports to science to true crime to technology to history to kids and family. I mean, they have like 20 different genres to choose from. To get this on your phone, you just go to discover and podcast should be under more from your membership toward the bottom. To get to this on your computer, you can find podcasts under featured in browse at the top. So you can browse by category and if you're looking for a specific one, you you can find it through search the same way you would find a book whether you're on your phone, tablet, or computer. And you can find that search bar in the upper right corner of the screen whether you're on the app or online. Now I know this sounds like I'm rambling about random features and how to get to them, but this is really just other things included in your membership. Some people don't really care about this. I barely use any of it myself, but what I like most about the Audible membership is that there are these super sweet limited time deals that they have all the time, especially toward the end of the year with the holidays. But every time I open up Audible, they have some kind of crazy sale going on. Here are a couple questions. If you cancel your membership, do you get to keep the books you bought? Let's say you got a free Audible book from your 30-day trial, and if you want one later, you'll get it, but for now, you don't. So if you cancel the trial, do you get to keep the book? Yes, you do. Even after the trial, if you cancel your membership, you do get to keep the books. Also, purchasing extra credits when you run out. What if you have a membership where you get one credit per month, but there's this one month that you can't stop listening to audiobooks and you need more audiobooks? Uh, is there a way to buy more credits? Is there? Yes, you can buy them, but only when you run out of credits and you have zero left. And I'll drop a link below with my tutorial on how to do this. Up next, folks, is a walkthrough of the Audible app, so get your popcorns and your Slurpees ready. Let's start with the home screen. This screen comes up when you open the app. Toward the top, it'll give you some recommendations, it'll tell you how many credits you have left, and below that they have some more recommendations, monthly deals, originals, top picks, and basically just a bunch of recommendations are on this page. Library. This is what you currently have in your library. At the very top is different ways to filter what kind of content you see. Underneath is ways to filter by current listening and download status. And underneath that, to the left, you'll see how many titles you have. And to the right, you'll see different ways to sort your library. Most people find the most convenient to be the default, which is by the most recent listen. If you hit select, you can select multiple audiobooks to remove or add to a collection. But that is library. I'm not going to go over all of these because I did that in my last video and I feel like it just made everything seem way too complicated. Honestly, when I'm looking for a book, I always just use the search bar. But this is a great way to keep your books and podcasts all organized how you want them to be. Next is Discover and this we already kind of went over, but again, the search feature is another way to find any specific book or program you're interested in. By the way, folks, in case I haven't said it like 89 times, uh, if you're looking for something specific, you can find it in the search in the upper right hand corner. And lastly, you have Profile. This is where you can find how long you've been a member what membership you have, how many credits you have left, what's included in your membership. And this is a big one for a lot of you watching. If you're a parent and you want to share Audible with your kids, but only certain books, it will walk you through creating a kid's profile. We got tips and tricks on how to get the most out of Audible. And looking at these, come to think of it, I've already talked about a lot of them on this channel, but there's also a badge collection where each one has a cute little poem on how to get the badge. For example, of course, the only one I still have not gotten is the social butterfly. If status updates are kind of your thing, you're well on your way to winning this bling. There's listening level, which I've never looked at because I've been using Audible so long that I don't even know when I hit master level. Listening time, which tells you how long you listened today, the last five days, the last month, and in total. And there's also recent listening history and customer support. Here's the player guide. When you open the app at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a player for the book. This does not go away. I don't know why. Personally, it never bothered me, but it's a convenient way to continue listening to whatever you last were. If you look at that whole bar, it shows the cover, the book name, the chapter that you're on, how much time is left on the right side of it. You can play or pause, and you can even go back 15 seconds in case there was something that you missed. If you tap on that bar, it'll take up the whole screen. Now, underneath the cover, to the left of the chapter name, you will see three horizontal lines with dots next to them. This lets you see and change the chapters. You can scroll 
scroll through the chapter that you're on with that little orange ball, it'll tell you on both sides of the line how far you are into it and how much is left. Underneath that are the player controls. The middle one is play and pause. The ones outside let you skip forward or back 15 seconds, and the ones outside those let you go forward or back a chapter. At the bottom of the screen, let's face it, there are going to be times that all of us probably cannot stand how fast or slow the narrator is speaking. So here is where you can change the playback speed. You can speed it up or slow it down. You can go into car mode. And then here's timer, which is great for listening on your way to sleep. It'll continue the book for a set time and then just drift off when that time is over so that you can continue it from where you left off the next time you listen. Then there's bookmarks. And I made a video about how to do those. So I'm going to link that below. At the top right, you can connect to a device. And the three dots to the right of that are other options like details on the book and if you want to share the book and more. At the bottom of this list though is player settings, but that's how you use the Audible player. And lastly, drawbacks to Audible. I've been an Audible user for eight years now and I love it like nothing else, but there's mainly really only one downside to this whole app and it's that Audible is not like Spotify or Netflix where you pay monthly for all you can eat access to everything you want every month all the time. And here's why. The truth is, Audiobooks are not decentralized yet, like music, TV, shows, and movies, and I don't know exactly why this is. It might have a lot to do with books not being as popular, but I can tell you that audiobooks contain a lot more content than movies and music. Instead of one to two hours, like many movies or albums, most audiobooks can be somewhere between six and eight hours long. That's a lot of content. Some can be as long as 30 hours or more. But if you're looking for something beyond the library where you pay once a month and listen all you want to anything, wherever, whenever, it doesn't exist, folks. Audible is the closest thing to it. Believe me, I've looked. I'm still looking. And if it does exist at the making of this video, I can just about guarantee you it's not available in America. And if it is, I can just about guarantee you it does not have the same selection Audible does, let alone customer service. And that's essentially what you're paying for. So it's a heck of a value proposition. Owning books of any format still is not exactly cheap, but when you compare the per credit prices at 10 to $15 and consider these idiotic deals they're churning out all the time. It sounds like a good deal to me when Barnes and Noble are out here charging $20, $30 a book. I'd rather spend $10 on a book than $30, wouldn't you? Heck, if I could get five or six and get myself a good 80 plus percent off, then why not? And for anyone else who still doesn't understand why Audible has a subscription-based business model, it is a pretty interesting reason that I went into more during my video about credit expiration at the 40-second timestamp that I will link below to. But that is how Audible works in 2025. I like to say that Anything I've come across that has changed my life more than Audible has walked into my life since I started listening to Audible. I really appreciate this app, and if you decide to pursue Audible, I hope that it has the same or even a better effect on you. Again, if there are any questions about Audible that I did not answer in the video, please let me know in the comments, or you can check out more of the videos that I've made about Audible. But chances are, if it's really specific, your best bet is probably just contacting Audible's helpline at 1-888-283. 5051. But that's the video. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. 